Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. As always, it's a privilege to come your way again with the word of the living God and a privilege to bring Jesus into your home. God bless you. Thank you all. You are welcome to this Bible study with Pastor Joshua Bruno. And today we have an interesting subject, an interesting topic. And I trust the Holy Spirit to be a blessing to you tonight. Very important that we share in the Word of God and share in His blessings. Let us pray. Supernatural Father, I pray tonight that you bring your word with accuracy and precision. And I pray, Holy Spirit, you will bless someone. You will explain truth to someone that will change their lives in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Holy Spirit, I shall not only be heard, but I shall be understood in the name of the living Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. We shall bring you the praise and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining me tonight. A very important moment with the Holy Spirit. You are welcome. God bless you. Please, as you come on, uh, I want you to share this video and invite people and tell them Pastor Joshua Bruno is teaching live and it's an interesting subject. The, so the topic tonight is, is Jesus enough? Is Jesus enough? It's just like asking, uh, is God enough? <laughs> Hallelujah. And uh, we'll be looking into the scriptures tonight and I'll be explaining by the help of the Holy Spirit, certain divine truths that will be a blessing to you. Amen. So we get into it now. Praise the Lord. And I'll be giving you scriptures. Please, I want you to get your Bibles wherever you are. This is Bible study. Get your Bibles wherever you are, please. And um, whatever it helps, whatever helps you to relax and to be able to share. Please, I want you to get your Bibles and uh, you can share this uh, experience with us tonight. So get your Bibles wherever you are. You can get a cup of water, cup of coffee, uh, juice, anything that makes you relax and share in this teaching tonight. God bless you. Praise the Lord. So please, as you do that, I want to just get myself together as well. Yeah. Amen. So is Jesus enough? I think the place we begin, the right question or the way to put it accurately, because in, uh, in teaching the word of God, care must be taken in the, in the use of words. Otherwise, you can convey the wrong meaning, even though you mean well. So in this particular subject we are talking about, I think the way to put it right to you would be, is the Jesus experience enough? Is the Jesus experience enough? Because truth be told, Jesus is enough, but it needs to be explained. Praise the Lord. It needs to be explained. Praise the Lord. It needs to be explained. Hallelujah. Because if you just go around and tell somebody, oh, Jesus is enough and the person looks around his life and uh, there are certain missing links uh, probably in his physical life in his um, finances in his marriage in you know in the things that pertain to this side of eternity uh, he begins to struggle with that with that with that with that statement so the, the the right way would be is Jesus is the Jesus experience enough and we will need to explain if Jesus is enough so i want to begin by saying something very poignant on this side of reality, very, very important to say this, on this side of reality, the things Jesus has done remains in the unseen reality. The complete work of the cross of Jesus, the complete work Jesus did on the cross, the benefits of that work, the result of that work remains in the reality, in the realm of the unseen. It is a reality. But it remains in the realm of the unseen. It means just like you have a computer system, uh, the internet age that we are right now, uh, you are able to download uh, certain things uh, for your use, for your benefit in your daily living. It's the same way you, are, you should also download from the spiritual realm into the physical realm. I, I, I hope you get that. You have to download just the same way you are able to apply certain things to be able to use them in this life in terms of the internet and all that, downloading music, downloading teachings and all that, things that are helpful to you in your daily living. It's the same way in this side of eternity, you have to bring something out of time into time. Praise the Lord. So the benefits of the cross is a reality. It is a reality, but it is in an unseen realm. So in that sense, you say, is Jesus enough? He is because it is a complete work that is done on the cross. Every, you know, remember when Jesus was going to heaven, he made it, I mean, when he finished, when he died on the cross, not when he was going to heaven, he gave a different instruction to the apostles when he was going to heaven. And we'll be looking at that in relation to what we are talking about. But on the cross, he said, it is finished. So that means it is done. It is an already done. Everything that you're seeking for, every blessing that you're seeking for, beginning with salvation unto the resurrection and everything in between is already an already done. It's an already done. So now how, there's, there's, there's the, the path of 
how do I now have them physically in my life as a reality, as a testimony, what people can see. So for that to happen, there are certain things we, we need to know and we need to look at. And generally, the whole scripture, the whole purpose of the Bible is to bring us into that experience. Hallelujah. But I want to make something very clear. If the experience of Jesus is enough, why did he leave mentors? So in the sense of saying Jesus is enough because of what he has done that is in the unseen realities, because the things that are seen are not seen are greater than the things that are seen. If that is enough in the realm of the spirit that needs to be downloaded here, it means then the right question put forward would be, if the Jesus experience is enough, why did he leave mentors? Why, did, why do we have the church? Now we, we need to break that down. We need to look that. We need to look into that subject. Praise the Lord. So please, I want you to follow me tonight. Amen. God is good. Hallelujah. God is good. Just take a moment here and get, get you some scriptures. Amen. We will start with Matthew chapter 26, verse 11. Please get your Bibles. Matthew chapter 26, verse 11. And then... Um, you can also look at Luke chapter 5, verse 35. We're going to be using that as a foundation to move on tonight. Luke chapter 5, verse 35. And it's the same thing that is also in Matthew chapter 9, uh, verse 15. Matthew chapter 9, verse 15. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good. All the time. All the time, God is good. Jesus is Lord. Amen. So... So this now so we we'll look at that you remember in matthew chapter 26 verse 11 uh, jesus was talking to the uh, to, uh, to to them he was speaking and he said the poor you have always with you those of you that have your bibles with you you can see that right there the poor you have always with you but me you do not have always now take that that's a very important statement jesus made there now there are many things i can teach from there i've, I've been teaching many things that in relation to that very verse of scripture over the years but in, in tonight, for tonight's topic, in relation to tonight's topic, oh, Sister Sharon, God bless you, Deacon and Sharon, God bless you for joining. Thank you all for joining. Thank you all for joining. So glad to see you, you know, to, to join me tonight and enjoy this teaching, enjoy the word of God. You love the Lord, you love his word. God bless you. May the Lord richly bless you tonight. Tonight, it's your night for a special blessing. Fair the blessing of the word. The blessing that comes from the word. Amen. So... He said that very clearly. He said, you, you have me, you, the poor you have always with you, but me you do not have always. So Jesus knew even before he left that he wouldn't be here at some point and there will be necess there will be, it will be necessary to have people that will be an influence in his place. Not taking over his place, but be a picture of him to this generation. Be an example of him to this generation. Be what people can see. Be the Jesus people can see. And I want to tell someone listening to me right now, you, you, you may not know it, but you are, you, are, you are Jesus to somebody. Hallelujah. You are Jesus to somebody. Now, when I'm saying you are Jesus to somebody, I'm saying that you are, you are, somebody's, you are somebody's solution. Because the, the meaning of the Greek name Jesus means Jehovah is salvation. Jesus saves. That is another way you can put it. Jesus saves. So you can say Savior. Uh, so when you, when, you, when you understand that concept, because when we talk of Jesus, that is what it actually means. When you now put the Christ to it, it means the anointed one, the, the Christ of God. But as you are right now, you are that Jesus or you can be that Jesus to someone. So Jesus knows that he's not going to be here. And he made very express, very clear statements to that effect he said the poor you would always have with you the reality of this life is going, always going to be with you but me the, ex, the me in person and my experience you're not going to it's not always going to be going to be just the way you think it is like you're seeing me right now so what is that experience of jesus because someone listening to me right now will say the experience of jesus i, I believe it may it should be it should be enough now let me put this question to you if the experience of jesus is enough why do you have to hear the word of God every day? Why do you need to go to church? Why do you need to, to seek after more truth? Why do you need to seek for more meanings in life? We know that when a man finds God, the search for meaning in life stops. So it begins with that experience. But that experience must be a daily occurrence. The number one experience of Jesus is the new birth experience. That is the number one experience of Jesus. So let us make it very clear. We're going to be breaking it down. This is teaching tonight. The number one experience is the new birth experience. That is the number one experience. It begins with that, the new birth experience. And we can see many scriptures to that effect. 
Many people, those, especially maybe some of you listening to me tonight, you have had a new birth experience. You have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Wonderful. And we know that without that, we cannot enter into the kingdom of God. We know that in Jesus Christ is life, and the life was the light of men. John chapter 1 from verse 4. And we know that in him is life abundantly. Now, this is all the experience of Jesus. John chapter 10 verse 10. But remember that I was telling you something about these things being in the unseen reality, being in the realm that is unseen, that needs to be downloaded into the seen realm. Hallelujah. So this, 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 this is, it begins with Jesus, the experience of Jesus at new birth. But that experience, is it enough in your life? If it is, many people will not be looking for, for answers every day, you see. So we need to get that, that truth established that I need this experience on a consistent basis. That is why Paul would write and say, walk out your salvation. He was writing to the church at Philippi, walk out your salvation, walk out. It's a process. Hallelujah. It's a process. Walk out. Walk out. And the, the truth is, Jesus didn't just go. He left. He left us a provision. He made a provision, like I said, for the Jesus that is already ascended into heaven to be seen in our everyday life. And I'm saying, at the end of this teaching, by the grace of God, if you don't know it, you may find out that you are that Jesus to someone in different ways. In different ways, you are or can be the Jesus to someone. The Bible says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So we understand that. So when we look at Luke chapter 5, verse 35, for example, he was talking to the disciples, I mean the Pharisees and the people, the scholars of the law, when they challenged him um, about fasting and all that. And Jesus said, he's still with them, but, it, but, but when he goes, that day, then they will fast. And we know that we can see that today. Jesus is at the right hand of God the Father, but we are still pressing in into the kingdom of God. Matthew chapter 11, verse, uh, uh, verse 12, uh, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffering violence and the violent take it by force. The same thing that was said uh, by the physician, Luke, the doctor, uh, Luke chapter 16, verse 16, everyone is pressing into it. What Jesus was trying to speak, say figuratively, was that uh, if you look at John the Baptist, his ministry and his own ministry, uh, that at that time, people were pressing him forcefully. People were searching for answers. People were coming to them. So people were forcing their way in. Violent men were pressing in. So it's the same way in, in our age. If you want to obtain in the kingdom of God, downloading those things from the realm of the unseen reality, you know, into this realm of you have to be forceful about it. You have to be active about it. Faith is active. And the life, the Christian life is a, is a life of faith. So it's a thing of, I want to have it. I want to have the, the daily occurrence and the daily experience. And I want to have this, this fruit of Jesus seen in my life every day. It's a forceful thing to do. You must be active. You must be taking, you must be, you know, wanting it. You must be needing it every day. Praise the Lord. So we see that Jesus made that very clear that he said when he goes, that we will be doing all of those things. When he was here physically himself, you know, the disciples uh, they didn't find it necessary to do so because they had Jesus right there. Now, Jesus is here, but I am saying that he made provision for us to have that experience. Otherwise, we may find some loopholes in our walk with Christ. So now let us look at what he said. When he was going, because he knows that his own experience might not be enough, the first provision he made was for mentorship. For mentorship, please, I want to write that down. The first provision Jesus made was for mentorship. And he gave the first mentor, the master mentor, the Holy Spirit. John chapter uh, 16, verse 13. What did Jesus Christ say? It is good for you that I go away. Now I'm paraphrasing the scriptures because uh, uh, by the grace of God, we're going to have, be having talking Bible tonight. I mean, not necessarily, but you can be reading them. You can, you can check what I'm saying, but I know that they are right. According to scripture, by the grace of God, the Holy Spirit helping me. In John chapter 16, verse 13, you can, if you want, I can read that for you because I like to read. This is Bible study. Okay, let me just read that for you. Praise the Lord. If you look at John chapter 16, verse 13, actually Jesus said a lot of things in relation to the master mentor. He said it all the way in the Gospels and then also before his ascension into heaven. Praise the Lord. And in Acts chapter 1, <clears throat> look at verse 13 of John chapter 16. Jesus Christ said, he said, How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. So that is the first master mentor. He made provision. Please write that down. Because Jesus knows that if his experience if his experience on a daily basis might not be enough, <laughs> he made provision for mentorship. Because if, he, if his experience is enough, there will be no need for mentorship. Now, the things I'm saying tonight may sound a little bit heretical or controversial, but I'm, I'm telling you tonight they're going to help you. Because in the church, 
we have been too often taught in such a way that, it, that, that it, the gospel can suddenly become a body and we struggle to find meaning or to find sense of it in our daily walk with God. And I thank God for the privilege that, and the grace that God gave me to, be, to enter, to put, me, put him into the ministry. Because the Lord put him into ministries to reveal God to mankind, to, to bring, to explain who God is in the most basic way people can understand him, both in word and in deed. And sometimes I would need to break certain norms, the way you have been taught, what you learned in church, the things you have been taught, you know. Uh, uh, the church is good, and I'm coming to that. Uh, the church is good, and the body of Christ is such a blessing. We are the body of Christ. You are the body of Christ. But we have seen that so many, there are so many uh, proclivities, so, so many excesses that are going on in the body of Christ today. It has not only, it is in one way, can be a blessing for those that are preaching Christ with the, with the right motive, and in some way it can become a damage. It has even cost, made some people leave the faith. And I pray that it's not your portion in the name of Jesus. But this is why God has sent uh, people like me and others who are teaching accurate gospel. Praise the Lord. I've told you oftentimes when I teach that something can sound correct, but it is not accurate. It might sound correct, but it is not accurate. That is why I'm very careful in the employ in the employment of language. And sometimes you will see me, I would even uh, redress myself. I would even uh, come back and explain and say, no, this is not the right, this is the right word to use. Because I've said the words you use can convey a meaning that can be injurious or can be a blessing. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. So Jesus said in verse 13 of that John chapter 16, for the purpose of mentorship, how be it when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. And I think there's another one where he said something. Is it John chapter 14? Um, John chapter 14, I guess, where he said, it is good for you that I go away. He said that expressly, it is good for you that I go away, because if he doesn't go away, then uh, the spirit of truth himself would not uh, would not uh, come so that uh, i believe you'll find that in john chapter 14 let's just see if we can see that here okay let us look at verse 16 of john chapter 14 he said and i pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever verse 17 even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because he seeth him not you see that uh, neither knoweth him but he know him for he dwelleth in you and shall be in you and jesus went on to say for the purpose of mentorship verse 18 i will not leave you comfortless i will come to you praise the lord so you can see that very clearly there now let us continue because of time so the first provision jesus made for his experience to be uh, uh, a daily realities on this side of eternity was for mentorship mentorship beginning number one with the master mentor the holy spirit the holy spirit is the master mentor hallelujah the next provision Jesus made for mentorship or, 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 the, or for, for, as, a, as, a, as a conduit for mentorship is uh, uh, the apostles and the prophets. Hallelujah. Jesus made pro provision for, in the body of Christ for, for leaders. For leaders. And I want to sh show you some scriptures to that effect. Uh, for example, before, but before I get into that, I want you to know that the Holy Spirit is here on earth. He is here with us on earth, but you can't see him. Sometimes, in the experience of God, it is possible for you to see a, a, a form of the Spirit. And I mean it literally. Now, be careful. What I'm saying, there may be a stretch for some of you, but it can happen. It can be in the form of uh, a form. It can be literally a form, but you will not see Him. It, you will not see him. I'm talking of glory. What I'm talking about now is glory, an appearance of glory. Another way is an experience of sound. There's something with sound and the Holy Spirit. I'm just talking of certain elements and things that are indicative of the presence of the Spirit. Now, that's that's just a little bit of a stretch, but that's not really the point I'm driving at tonight. But I'm just saying that the Holy Spirit is not really some, you can't see him. But that there are people that God put in, the, that Jesus, for his experience to be uh, uh, something active in your life every day, put in your life. And that is people you can see that are mentors. And they are the leaders in the body of Christ. You have <clears throat> the five-fold ministry. And important to note is that if you look at second chronicles chapter 20 verse 20 because the scripture agrees with scripture everything god is a god of pattern everything god did in the old testament he did in the new testament we are still enjoying those days today so anything you're seeing today god has already set a pattern of it in the past that is why you should have faith and confidence that what i'm seeking from god god is going to do because god has done it before hallelujah everything god does is forever so now look at this in second chronicles chapter 20 verse 20 for you to see that the the, the place of mentorship is very relevant god expressly said that you should believe in him i mean you should you should trust in him believe his prophets you hope in him believe he used the word believe 
And I know many translations agree with that term. Believe. Don't, I didn't say believe in them. Believe them. Believe them. There's one thing. You believe in Jesus. You believe his prophet. Are you seeing the words I'm using right now? You believe in Jesus because Jesus is the one doing the work. He is the source of the blessing. You believe his prophet. Because if you don't believe his prophet, the anointing will not, be, will not come. It will not flow through. Because they are conduits. They are conduits. In Matthew chapter 10, Jesus talked about it again. If you read verse 44 to 45, he that receives a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. So for the blessing to flow through to the body of Christ, Jesus, the high priest, has put leaders, those that are representatives of Christ. And I'll be showing you scriptures to betray that. And the moment you walk in agreement with that principle, because God is not a uh, God is not an author of confusion, as many want us to believe today. People just wake up, I uh, got the revelation, and they open church. Now, of course, we can talk about that. I can preach on that for a whole year. There is a place for that. People are being called every day. One of my, the fruit of my ministry is people hear me, and God draws them into ministry. Praise the Lord, Hallelujah! So many. I mean, it's a, it's a proof of my ministry, and I thank God for that. But I want you to know something. You don't just go out on the street. You don't just go out on the street without proper mentorship without a proper understanding of what the calling is. Otherwise, you you might just struggle. You know, there's what I call the school of hard knocks. If God has not called you and prepared you, you're going to go through the school of hard knocks. And if, if you're not careful, this, this, Satan with his devices may just get you out of the way. So, but what I'm saying is, God has set a, a model for the blessing in the body of Christ. Jesus, the high priest, the Holy Spirit, our, our master mentor, and then the leaders in the body of Christ. This is very important for you to have practical and pragmatic experience of Jesus on earth. This is very important because I've seen many people who go to church year in, year out, they remain the same. And I've often, when I talk with them, when I speak with them, I find out that they have a problem of submission to spiritual authority. Often, often they think they know too much. They think they've learned, you know, they go, they go ahead of Christ. They go ahead of the word. And if you go ahead of God, you are your own God. So there is a model that Jesus has set beginning the first provision, and like I said, is mentorship. If Jesus, if the Jesus experience is enough, if him alone is enough for you, just the way he is, uh, for what he has completed in the unseen realities, I'm going to tell you right now, uh, then you don't need any mentor. Then you don't even need the Holy Spirit. But Jesus didn't say that. I will show you the scriptures to that effect. He made it very clear. It is good for you that I go away so that the Spirit, He will not send us the Spirit. Hallelujah. He will send us the Spirit. This Spirit will mentor us. And this Spirit is working. It is the self same Spirit. If you read 1 Corinthians 3, it is the self same Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit that is at work in the body of Christ through the fivefold ministry. So there is a model for blessing. So this, and this fivefold ministry, which you have, you have, you see them, you can see these people. And the moment you can submit yourself to that spiritual authority, the blessing is going to flow through. The blessing is going to flow through. God cannot lie. When I tell you this, I know what I'm saying. God cannot lie. Often when I talk with people, I find a missing link. They do not submit to spiritual authority. They have no pastor over their head. They have no spiritual authority over their head. And that is why they walk in crisis. His prophet. Believe his prophet. I want to read that, please. Very important. And then I proceed. Because if we don't lay the foundation right, if the foundation be destroyed, what can the righteous do? I see you, honey. I see my beautiful wife. Thank you. God bless you. How beautiful. Thank you for joining every one of you all looking so gorgeous from everywhere you are around the world. God bless you. Please let us look at Second Chronicles. Uh, um, our media team is, is giving me some information. God bless you. But I'm uh, please. Uh, I'm already uh, live here teaching, so we cannot uh, please uh, do any of these other things. I know there's a lot of work going on for our media ministry, but right now, Pastor is already teaching live. So please. Um, um, you, you will not have to bear with this and until we finish. Praise the Lord. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20. Uh, or First Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20, please. First Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20, and then we can move on, please. There are so many things you're going to enjoy tonight. I hope I still have time on my side. Please, uh, before I get into the main things, let us just lay this foundation. Where is it now? Uh, amen. Praise the Lord. So, Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20. Okay, because I want you to see that what the Lord Himself said. Now look at that. The B part of it, because if you read the first part of it, you won't see what I'm talking about. But the B part, where is it now? Amen. Praise God. 
okay now let us look at that look at the deep part if you go down believe in the lord your god and so shall you be established believe his prophets so shall you prosper believing in god establishes you believing his prophets prospers you you see the model of what i'm talking about now so th this is very straight very clear in, in print in black and white hoping and trusting in god which is exactly what it is because faith is confidence in god that is what is very clear there faith is confidence in god believing in god believing in jesus having the jesus experience at new birth which i'm going to tell you right now is not nearly enough it's not nearly enough because many people have received jesus christ into their life they're not exactly expressing jesus every day in word and deed because they have not yet appropriated all the blessings of it on this side i'm teaching life so whatever you're doing on the media side because it's quite interrupting what i'm doing here please be aware that pastor is teaching life praise the lord hallelujah so you can see that very clear faith is confidence in God. But God is saying for you to prosper, for you to have a proof of the Jesus we are talking about. Because he has set a model. You have to believe his prophets. Mentorship cannot be discarded in the body of Christ. You cannot discard it. After this teaching, some of you would begin to learn to understand that my pastor is for my blessing. My prophet is for my profit. Hallelujah. Are you following what I'm saying? My apostle is for my increase. Praise the Lord. So now let us let us get into the basics of this teaching now. Praise the Lord. I'll be paraphrasing scriptures because of time. I'll be paraphrasing scriptures. Now look at this now. The physical mentors you can see are very important. But you have to be careful the mentors you submit to. The, the authority under which you sit, you have to be very, very careful because some mentors are basically tormentors. The way they, 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 they mentor the mentee doesn't advance anything good for the mentee leads the mentee into more trouble probably even more struggle in the faith so you have to be careful if you're not making any progress under a mentor prayerfully consider prayerfully talk to the whole prayerfully look at that situation very very important prayerfully look at that situation amen prayerfully you consider it is this where i belong because I want you to understand something. For the purpose of the blessing to flow in the body of Christ, and it flows through the giftings of the Spirit, for it to flow, there is a word path. What do I mean by the word path? The word path is that for every person on earth as a believer, there is, you are assigned, there is a man of God assigned to your life. That man of God is the one with the word path to your blessing. That man of God is the one with the word path to your miracle. So when you are sitting under a mentorship, prayerfully consider if that is where you belong very very important because if that is where you belong and it's it's, it's the same jesus if you're sitting in a place and you submit to that spiritual authority i can tell you who god who cannot lie god who cannot lie and i repeat that god who cannot lie we see that you prosper according to his word in the name of jesus christ so now let us proceed we see that in scripture let us start with ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 to 16 because of time ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 to 16 and you, can, you should read from ephesians chapter 4 from verse 11 to 21 read all of it you will find the five foot ministry you'll find it the pastor the evangelist the prophet the apostle and the teacher and the bible said therefore there is a purpose for them in the body of christ god bless you sister sharon thank you let us look at ephesians chapter 4 thank you deaconess for that let us look at ephesians chapter 4 please very important for you to see the provision of mentorship that jesus gave in the body of christ and uh, after this i believe that some of your pastors on sundays will be pleased after you heard pastor joshua bruno teach how you now receive their ministry and I pray that you humble yourself. Don't receive the gospel with criticism. If you do that, it's not going to work. Just humble yourself and do what Jesus said, and you will see him working for your good. Healing will flow in your life like rivers of living water. Somebody listening to me right now, there is a part of your body you need healing. And I'm praying because you have, you have just humbled yourself to listen right now, that God will flow in your body, in your sinews and in your bones and in your bloodstream. And there will be a perfect healing of your body in the name of Jesus Christ. Every blood says shall answer to the speaking blood, the blood of Jesus that speaks today, better things than the blood of Abel in your life. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11. Look at that. Look at that. Let us start from verse 10. He that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens, that he might feel all things. Speaking of Jesus, the, the, the Jesus, our uh, Jesus, uh, the Son of God. The the, 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 the the author and finisher of our faith. Look at verse 11. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Why? 
There is a purpose for it. For the perfecting of the saints, verse 12. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. For the blessing of the body of Christ. That is why Paul, when he would write, he would say, you know, sometimes Paul would write and he would say, I, I hope to come to you in the full measure of the blessing of the gospel of the Lord Jesus. That is, that is the whole purpose of this. The purpose of mentorship, the purpose of this provision that Jesus made so that the experience is a reality on this side of eternity for you every day is so that you are blessed with the richness of the gospel. That is why when I'm speaking, I always tell you, I pray and I trust the Holy Spirit that you'll be blessed via the blessing of the word, the blessing that comes from the word. The word is the foundation of the blessing. Hallelujah. Go verse 11 to 21, please. Look at verse 20 of that Ephesians 4. You can see it really made, made clear that there is a place for, for one to be a protege. It says, but ye have not so learned Christ. Ye have not so learned Christ. There are so many things I could talk about there, but uh, because of time. You have not so learned Christ. It means you learn Christ uh, through, uh, through a, a mentorship, sitting under the mentorship of uh, a man of God. Praise the Lord. Please just give me a sec here. I need to pass one information. Please. I need to pass one information. It's urgent for them, so amen. Praise the Lord. So let us get back to it. Um, where did we stop? Now let us go. Uh, we just talked about physical mentors because of time. And you can look at First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12 to 13. These mentors are, like I said, conduits for your destiny to manifest. Um, we can see it, for example, by, in Bible, there are biblical, there's a biblical precedent for mentorship. Biblical precedent, Moses to Joshua. Moses to Joshua. Moses, the spirit, the Bible says the spirit of wisdom was on Joshua. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 34 from verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 34 from verse 9. So jo Joshua was a protege of Moses. Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 9. Elijah to Elisha. Elijah to Elisha. You can see that in 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 9. Elijah to Elisha. 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 9. And uh, poor to Timothy, you can see poor to Timothy, poor to Timothy, poor to Timothy. You can see that in Second Timothy chapter four from verse five. Second Timothy chapter four from verse five. You can see where. Let us just please we may just look at that. Please let us look at that. Second Timothy chapter four verse five. Second Timothy chapter four. Verse 5, please. Let us just look at that so that you see expressly. You know, Timothy was a protege of, uh, of Paul. He was a pastor. So that is why the books of Timothy and Titus are what we call in theology, the pastoral epistles. Look at verse 5 of uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4. You see, uh, no, 2 Timothy chapter 4, please. Where is that? No, 2 Timothy chapter 4. Okay, it says, uh, where is it? Let me see. Verse 5, it says, Paul now writing to Timothy after warning him, after encouraging him, after telling him to be preached the word and be instant in season and out of season he went on to say in verse 5, but watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of that ministry, so he was you can see what a mentor does to a protege praise the Lord, you can see all this replete in scripture, there is a precedent there is a precedent to that there is a precedent to that so now let us go forward and uh, you can read, like I said, First, First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12 to 13. I hope I'm not missing something there because some of these scriptures are very poignant. First Thessalonians chapter 5, First Thessalonians chapter 5, from this, uh, where is that now? From verse 12 to 13. Mm. Okay, now look at where, where Paul expressly approve the place of mentorship by the help of the Holy Spirit. Look at that, he said, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you, look at verse 13, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourselves. Look at that. That is, that is scripture. It says you should honor them. You should, you, should, you should hold them in high esteem. You should hold them for their, love, for their work's sake. Love them highly in love for their work's sake. And, uh, and uh, you know, know these people, know who these people are that admonish you in the Lord. Very clear in Scripture. Very clear in Scripture. Also, you can see it in Colossians chapter 4, verse 17, where Paul was talking to Archippus now. So, but just very clear, Jesus, the Jesus experience 
is ex is is enjoyed, is is received, is known, is is um, you know is felt, is lived, is um, is uh, um, obtained on this side of eternity to its fullest through mentorship. Hallelujah. Now we can look at modern day examples. A. A. Allen to R. W. Shambach. A. A. Allen was a man, was a mentor to A. R. W. Shambach. R. W. Shambach was a great man of God. A. A. Allen was so powerful that he God used him so much. When I use the word powerful, what I mean is the Holy Spirit was so strong, was so much at work in him that he did so many miracles, so many miracles. And then you have um, uh, Archbishop Bensley. That also some of you celebrate Bishop David Oyedipo today. A lot of us celebrate Bishop David Oyedipo today, but his mentor was. Archbishop Bensley Dawsa. He had a, a, a practical mentorship from Archbishop Bensley Dawsa and he's doing the work that he is doing today. We have pa Akinda Yomi. You talk of Pastor E.E. Adebuye today. It was true Pastor, it was true pa Akinda Yomi that he, that he got uh, established in ministry and today doing the great work. I think the largest Christian organization on earth. Now you have um, uh, people like, um, people like um, uh, Dr. Mike Murdoch who is a great man of God, a great blessing to me, a great mentor, Dr. Mike Modok. Dr. Mike Modok had people in his life that was a great, great blessing. Ora Roberts was one of them. Very powerful inspiration Ora Roberts was to Dr. Mike Modok. And then you have Jimmy Swagger to open the door of ministry for Dr. Mike Modok. I remember Dr. Modok saying something about him sending out a hundred invitations or something like that that opened the door of ministry for him. So you need there is mentorship for you to be able to have the Jesus experience to its fullest. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, we know that the new birth experience is where it begins, but we are saying that it is not nearly enough for you to have that experience just by that. Because, for example, somebody can just get back again now. They enter, they say, Holy Spirit, I need a car now. Taxi, taxi comes. Uh, but uh, at some point, if the devil buffets them, they don't know what to do. That is what we're talking about because they have not been mentored. They don't know. For example, you know, in scripture, there is a place where the Bible talked about uh, uh, an evangelist who went about preaching and he had passion and he had everything. But he was also brought into a better knowledge and understanding of the way by those who knew it. So this is this is what we're talking about. Praise the Lord. So you can you can look look at scriptures about the new new you know about the new birth experience. Second Corinthians chapter five verse seventeen. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And then you can you can see that even God already talked about it in the Old Testament before it happened in the New Testament, which is in Ezekiel chapter thirty six verse twenty six, and Ezekiel chapter eleven verse nineteen. Ezekiel chapter thirty six verse twenty six. And Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 19. There are other portions of it in scripture. But you can see Romans chapter 6 from verse 4 to 6. I'm giving you scriptures that has to do with a new birth experience. Galatians chapter 6 verse 15. First Peter chapter 1 from verse 3 and 23. I think I would love to read that. And John chapter 1 verse 13. Remember in John chapter 3 Jesus said, Except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That's the new birth experience. That is talking about salvation. But salvation is not the only theme in scripture. I want to make you know that now. <laughs> so, you know, a lot of people fixate on just the grace of God, but the grace of God is not, again, I repeat, the grace of God is everything comes out of the grace of God, the love of God, yes, but it is not the only theme in Scripture. Everything given in Scripture is for the total experience of God. What is the total experience of God? Is it for you to be perfect in your soul, in your spirit, and in your body? For that to happen, it, is, it goes beyond just knowing and understanding the new birth experience. You need mentorship to come into the full knowledge of the Son of God. You need mentorship to come into the full knowledge of the Son of God. And that means somebody knows something you don't know. Somebody have an experience of a part of God you don't have. That is why the Bible talks about until we come into the unity of the faith. Hallelujah. Am I teaching good? And I believe I do so by the help of the Holy Spirit. So I want you to receive that. I want you to receive your pastor. I want you to receive your man of God. The person God put into your life is for your profit. It's for your blessing. So now you can see now, for example, now, point uh, talking making reference to all these things because he knows that just getting born again if you just think that that is enough if that is enough people who got born again a lot of them will be born in with the fire of the holy spirit but we have since seen and known that so many people are not even born in so many people are, are lukewarm so you need mentorship you need provision was made by jesus so that the experience will be a constant hallelujah so we should be there are many other things i would love to talk about but because of time but let me just let me just say something about what mentorship simply means what the provision the provision jesus made before he left beginning with the holy spirit as the master mentor what it simply means is discipleship mentorship simply means discipleship it is not enough to be born again you need to be discipled it is not enough for god bless you it is not enough for you to god bless you for hearing i want to repeat that it is not enough for you to be born again you need to be discipled that is why you see in some churches you go you have what you call disciple discipleship class um, um and you know, what do you call it uh, beginners class and all that you need to be discipled 
very important that you understand the fundamentals of scripture the fundamental foundation the foundation of scripture if you don't have it you're going to struggle in certain areas there are many other things in scripture you need to learn it begins with salvation and the consummation of everything is resurrection but yes between that salvation and resurrection you need to know wisdom you need to have wisdom of the lord you need to you need to know how the application of that goes you need to understand sanctification you need to understand a whole lot of things how to walk with the lord how to receive from the lord it's not just enough to give offering and seed and tithe is to understand uh, the art of receiving there are so many things that are in scripture many other things in scripture healing so many things in scripture miracles the working of miracles the gifts of the spirit the fruit of this there's so many things in scripture so many things things that even have to do with money there are theologians that have even told you that a lot almost everywhere you look in scripture there's quest talk of money so there are so many but if you don't study scripture if you don't learn from a mentor you don't see these things because somebody takes time to study to see those things Hallelujah. So, but when you sit and learn, then you learn them, then you know them. Praise the Lord. And it takes humility to learn. Praise God. It takes humility to learn. So, um, discipleship. Look at the given Jesus himself, because he knows that that experience needs to be a reality on this side of eternity. When he was going in Matthew chapter, let us look at Matthew chapter 28, one of the most favorite verses of scripture that anybody should have. And I like to quote from there, for example, I've often told you that the greatest promise of the Lord Jesus is that he will be with you both now and forever, be with you to the very end of the age. But let us look at, um, let us start from verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20. And Jesus came and spoke unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Verse 19, go ye therefore and teach them and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Verse 20, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the age. Look at that verse 20, teaching them to observe all things. That is discipleship right there. It is talking of discipleship. It is a place for discipleship. There is a place for mentorship. And if you don't sit under it, you will not know something, you will not learn something you need to know to advance your 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 place in life praise the lord um now i want to let you know give you a factor of a, a place of mentorship uh, what i'm trying to say is that place is a factor of mentorship place is also a factor of mentorship do we pro go to go quickly to into that okay i want to say before i go into that that mentorship there is a purpose to mentorship mentorship has very great value in it which is ultimately perfection what is what is mentorship? Let me just say something about mentorship is avoiding unnecessary mistakes. Mentorship is simply is simply just taking you along a path that makes you to avoid the mistakes of the mentor. Praise the Lord. It is it is it is a foreknowledge. It is the experience, it's a foreknowledge. It's for you to gain a knowledge that you don't yet have that prepares you against your future. Amen. Very, very, very important that you grasp this truth. These truths are very, very... Mentorship is avoiding unnecessary pain. Unnecessary pain in life. Mentorship is avoiding unnecessary... I repeat that. Unnecessary pain. A lot of people, God helps them. They set out. God eventually comes through for them. But they go... They, they first of all pay the price of pain. And it's unnecessary if you had a mentor in your life. Amen. There are certain things I've learned in ministry that I'm willing, and I've done it many times. I've had people sit under my ministry. I've taken them through my school of ministry and taught them because I don't want them to go through certain things. Because it's one thing to, to have Bible training or to go to Bible school or to have all the divinity degrees and all that. It's another thing to have a practical experience of it in the field. Completely two different things. You can read all the books, but when you get out there, there are many things you'll be taught. There are many things I can, you can teach. You can learn in Bible school. There are many things... I could tell you right now, but in practical experience, it may be different. So that is why it, it's important that you sit at every opportunity you have and listen. Listen, not with criticism. Listen. Listen to receive. There are so many things, for example, I was taught growing up in ministry. And then when you enter into the world of ministry, you, you, because we are people of love, ministry is law, is a, is a work of love. And you enter into ministry, you begin to find yourself... I don't want to use the word compromise, but you begin to find yourself, uh, you know, shifting some of those knowledge you gained. And before you know what is happening, it comes back to bite you. And then you say, oh, I was taught, my teacher taught me this, my professor, whoever taught me that, somebody taught me this, or, or I was taught this by such a great man of God, or I listened to somebody who taught me something, I didn't do it, and it cost me. So there are many practical reasons why you should receive this mentorship from the Holy Spirit and his servants. 
very, very important for you to grow in the body of Christ, for you to prosper as an individual, as a Christian, as somebody that is here still on, on earth, for you to prosper, the mentorship must not be discarded. Your pastor is for your blessing. Your prophet is for your profit. Your apostle is for your increase. Hallelujah. You see, let every man be careful how he builds, you know. Yeah? You see, every man should be careful how he builds because every man's work shall be tried. But he also went in another place. He said, he said something about that Apollo's water, uh, Paul planted, uh, Paul, uh, Paul planted Apollo's water and God gave the increase. You see, there was a place you could see right there that uh, the provision of that mentorship came to play. Paul planted Apollo's water and God gave the increase. Hallelujah. So, but you have to sit and receive. You have to learn. You have to humble yourself. Not sitting with criticism and criticizing people that take time to labor in studying the word and bringing it to you, in praying and bringing it to you. And if you're a man of God, take time to study. Learn it today. Learn the art of study and prayer because that is the first sign of being a true man of God. If you're not able to do that, in the words of uh, Doug Herwald Mills in one of his books I read, uh, something must be wrong with you because you must be able to pray for long periods of time. And that way you are able to bring sound gospel, bring in season words to those people that are sitting under you to proteges. Hallelujah. It's not just to sit up. It's not that people just think you just run out and begin to do things. No, it's a great calling and no man can do it except the Lord calling. You can read that in Hebrews chapter 5. I want to round up by talking about the factor of place in uh, the factor of place, uh, venues for learning, for mentorship. The church is the first example, the best example. There are other examples. For example, in our church, in our ministry, sometimes I will bring people in other fields of, uh, of endeavor, in other fields of knowledge. Sometimes, you know, uh, just so that people get the experience, for example, if it's in education or something like that. And sometimes I even tell people I want to bring someone, I want to bring this. There are people that are experts in finances and all that. So there are many fields of knowledge that are good, that are relevant for your day-to-day -day living. And Jesus knows that. Jesus knows that, but the foundation of it all first begins in the body of Christ, hallelujah, which is the church. That is why you shouldn't be missing church. The church is a place you should go because the mentorship that you need, the foundation of every mentorship you need begins there. If you cannot be well spiritually, your spiritual well-being determines your physical well-being. Your physical, your spiritual well-being determines your physical well-being. If you're not healthy spiritually, you won't be healthy physically. You can look good on the outside, but on the inside, something is missing. And I'm having a great subject already the Lord has given me for Sunday. And uh, so many subjects the Lord has given me. But there's one that I'm bringing by the grace of God. Since this is the month of the, glor the glorious month, I'm bringing it away on Sunday. We begin to see certain levels of uh, understanding uh, in the world. And I'll be, I'll be doing that by the grace of God on Sunday. But I want to just get what I'm the picture of where I'm going. I'm just telling you something. I said, if you don't have, if you don't have spiritual health, you won't have physical health. If you don't have spiritual health, you don't have physical health. Because everything in the realm of the physical begins in the realm of the spiritual. Hallelujah. Are you following me? So the house of God is the first place that mentorship that you need, the foundation of every mentorship you need, begins. And I want to read that for you, for you to see. And this is, uh, there is what we call the law of place. And I want to round up with that because I'm saying that, talking about if the factor of place in the equation of mentorship. The factor of place in the equation of mentorship. And I want to use, I'm not teaching on that now, but I'm just going to use just something about it in reference to scripture on the law of place. Why? Because there is, a, there is what is called there. And this is a spiritual um, um, uh, knowledge that the Lord gave me. I'm bringing to the body of Christ and I, I sometimes we talk on it or teach on it. But I want to just say it now as I'm closing. The law of place in the sense of a place called there. The blessing is in a place called there. God is a place. God is not only a person, he is also a place. That may sound strange to you or heretical or controversial, but it's true. God is not only a person, God is also a place. God is not only a person, God is also a place. Jesus said, let us read that in Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. Let me show you that now. Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. Look at that. It says, um, and I have a teaching on, on uh, um, uh, uh, speaking on place, you know, I have a teaching on that, the law of place. You need to look at look for those teachings on YouTube and other places. There are many teachings. So I think, uh, thank you all for joining. God bless you. And I want to appreciate partners that are supporting this work. Such a blessing what you do to sponsor this gospel. And our partners too that are streaming for us live. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus. God bless you and uh, such a blessing that you're partnering with Pastor Joshua Bruno. I want to also give a shout out to my dear brother uh, 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 at uh, the CBIN studio. Such a blessing. God bless you. Such a great work. And if you're a man of God, I don't know if that's applicable, but they've set up a great thing uh, going on there. 
in uh, Lagos, Nigeria. And uh, please, you can you can look into that and be a blessing. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless you. Now, let me just read this. Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. Look at this. Talking of the principle of there. I'm talking of the principle of the blessing in that place called there. Okay? God is not only a person. God is a place. Now, look at this. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Thank you. Thank you for highlighting that scripture, Deaconess. Look at that. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So grateful, Deaconess Sharon, for highlighting that scripture. Look at that. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. So you see what I told you now? God is Jesus. is not only just a person. He's also a place. Where two or three of you, if you gather in a place, the blessing of mentorship, the blessing of his presence rests there. Because he's there. There. Let me show you another place of there. What the, you can't just say you don't go to church. When you go to church, you give God. Is every church service is an opportunity opportunity for God to move. Every gathering of saints is an opportunity for God to move. Every gathering of saints is an opportunity for you to get blessed because there, there, you can say that to yourself. You can repeat that. Repeat that word to you. When you repeat things, repetition creates influence. There. There, I will be blessed. There. Now, let me show you the scripture, another one. Psalms 133. Psalms 100. I can give you many scriptures to that effect. I told you I've thought of something that has to do with place. You can check it out on our website. Our website is under construction right now, but it will be back up very soon. But you can check our Facebook page right now where you're watching. Um, the video is there. You can even go to CBIN Studios. You can also request that. It's there. Um, you can go to... Um, you can go to our YouTube page, Pastor Joshua Bruno is there. You can go to Twitter and there as well. You can go to my Instagram. And please, I want to encourage you as I round up tonight to follow me on social media. Because every day I am teaching. Every day. Maybe not in person, but my materials, the things God gave me, are being put out by our media team, sometimes by myself. But they are there every, I don't know, few hours every day. A special word of God is being released, either by graphics, either by video, either by text. And uh, sometimes I even write weekend pastoral letters and apostolic letters. So I want you to join this network. I want you to join this media uh, ministry of Pastor Joshua Bruno. You will be richly blessed. And those of you that are members and partners of God Movement here in Germany, in the Kutaslo area, uh, Billy Fed, Fell, and all these other places in Germany, God bless you so much for partnering with me. And those of you around the world, wherever you are, thank you so much. I really appreciate that. But I want you, if you are not following me on Instagram, go on Instagram, follow me, Pastor JB. Follow me tonight. If you're not following me on Twitter, go there. You'll find me, Pastor Joshua Bruno, Pastor JB. Uh, on Facebook, now you can see the page, Pastor Joshua Bruno. Click the like button. You go to YouTube, subscribe there because they put up videos every time. Every day I am teaching, whether in person or in spirit, but I am teaching. I may not be there physically, but my spirit, I'm teaching. You will see them materials are always put out. Things that God is speaking to me, sometimes prophetically, sometimes just whatever. God from his word, from his word, not my word. He's putting them out and it's for your blessing. Let us look at Psalms 133 as a close. Um, I think I have uh, to top the hour to be about seven minutes or six minutes, but I will just follow this quickly. Psalms 133. Please, and sometimes need to digress because I found that a lot of you sit under my ministry and you only wait until I come live. Some of you don't even know that this all these other social media apps on which we minister every day. So look at Psalms 133. Um, I will read all of it so that you get it in context. You get it in context. Scripture often has to be brought in context, explained with another scripture for better understanding so that there is no place for heresy, so that there is no place for uh, misinformation. Praise the Lord. Look at that. Behold, Psalms 133, I read from verse 1 to 3. Very important, which is also alluding to what Jesus is talking about in Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. Look at it. Psalms 133 from verse 1 to 3. Behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head. He's speaking of virtues. He's speaking, he said, the precious ointment is talking of virtues. It's like wishing somebody shalom. In it are many blessings. All right? In it, I, I wish I could talk on this for a whole year. Now look at this. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the build, upon Aaron's build. Okay? That went down to the skirts of his garment. He's talking of the priest now, a picture of the priest in the house of God. That went down to the skirts of his garment. Verse 3. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, talking of the place of the blessing, the church, for dear, please underline that word, for dear, 
Thank you, Deacon and Sharon, for highlighting that. Underline that word. For dear. Oh, please, underline that. When I'm saying these things, people like us, like I often say, don't talk anyhow. I am here for your blessing. When I tell you something, take it to the bank, cash the check. If you can leave it and do it, you will see the blessing speak in your life. Because God cannot lie. These are not my words. These are the Lord's words. I'm only a voice. I'm only a voice of the Lord. I'm only a, a vessel of the Lord. I'm, I'm, I'm a prophet, an apostle of the Lord. That is, my, that, is, that is the office in which I stand. And a pastor at a church as well. So I'm telling you something that I've seen proven. Okay? It's proven and it will work for you in Jesus' name. Look at that. For dear, which is the same thing Jesus is saying in Matthew chapter 18 verse 20. For dear, look at what God said. The Lord commanded the blessing. That is one of the reasons why God movement, a church here in Germany, is called the place of the blessing. It's a dear. It's a dear. You can write that down. Your church, your ministry, where your man of God, your mentor, ministers, is a dear. Is a place of the blessing. Dear, dear, God commanded the blessing. Dear. So if you're not going to church, you're doing yourself a disservice. I didn't say you won't go to heaven, but you're not very smart. Oh, that's a cracker. Amen. Oh, me. Praise God. Now, for dear, the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. Even life forevermore. Even life forevermore. <laughs> look at that. And remember that the Bible talked about the path of the just is like a shining light. Even life, look at that. Look at the bringing it together. Even the path of the just is like a shining light that shineth more and more to a perfect day. Another place in the book of Proverbs says that along that path is immortality. It means that there are many blessings along the path of the dear. All right, which ultimately culminates in resurrection, immortality, which is the highest form of the blessing. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, dear God commanded the blessing. Sometimes many people have not found that that is because they are not sitting under spiritual mentorship. It's why they are lacking in certain areas of their life because they are not sitting under mentorship. Let us round off with Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 to 30, 25, because I want to really tell you that the factor of place is very relevant. The factor of place is very very relevant and i repeat again and i've taught on it in depth and uh, by the help of the holy spirit uh, the lord has reminded me something to do and i'll be doing it probably in the new year beginning sometimes and i'll be speaking with some of our partners media partners about that so that we can dedicate a day i want to go back and teach on certain things the lord has given me over the years materials that i put out sometimes things like this i want to be talking on them so that you understand these are small things in to us but they mean a lot in heaven they may sound small just attending church may look like it's nothing but it means a lot in heaven it means because you're, every day you attend church, every time you work, like you're attending, listening to me right now, you are acknowledging who God is. Just for, just for being here, you're acknowledging who God is. And God will confess you before the angels. Praise the Lord. Let us close up with, uh, I want to go back and bring some of these materials that I've been teaching on. Things like this love place and all that. And, and things like, uh, the, the, when I'm talking of the places of things like there. And I repeat again, write them down. I've talked about it in terms of the tabernacle, speaking of God being a person. Not only a person, but also a place. God is not everywhere. <laughs> now, somebody may be shocked me saying that, but it's true. God is not everywhere. God is in a particular place. God is, I mean, God is everywhere. Sorry to, uh, I think I got that. I just moved, made, moved, put that together. God is everywhere, but God is not in every place. <laughs> you, you understand? So that means God is in places or specific places. God is everywhere because he's sovereign. Uh, he is uh, omnipresent. So he is everywhere. It is the nature of God. He is everywhere. It's an attribute of God. Omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent, all powerful, all knowing, all present. He sees everything. But he is not in every place. So that means that there are places that God is. What do I mean? The tangible presence of God. And I'll be teaching these things over the as the coming months. The tangible presence of God, I call it the concentrated presence of God, are in particular places that he is invited. God walks by invitation. Call on to me. Come on to me. If you hear me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Scripture is just, just very clear on that. Amen. So let us look at that. Um, let us round up with Hebrews chapter 10. Please, Hebrews chapter 10, and then I will close. Please, I need to close now. I uh, had a busy, busy day and week. And uh, we thank the Holy Spirit. But it's the Christmas season, and as I'm running up, I'm going to be saying Merry Christmas. And I'm glad that we are able to say that as Christians. We are not using happy holidays. If you want, you can to eat his own faith. But I'm going to tell you as a believer, be happy to say to someone, Merry Christmas. Because the season is about Jesus. It's about Jesus. It's about Jesus. Amen. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 to 25. And we'll round up. 
Hebrews chapter 10, verse 24 to 25. And let us consider one another, speaking of fellowship now, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Remember that the purpose of being saved is to show for the light of Jesus good works. If you read uh, verse, uh, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8, go back to verse 9. Unto good works, you're saved to reflect who Jesus is. So, and all of those things comes to the fore through the right mentorship, beginning with the Holy Spirit. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. Verse 25. Not forsaking. I like that. Yeah, I like that. Not forsaking the assembly of assembling of ourselves together. This is an express instruction. But today you hear people who, who've not, who don't know the Bible tell you oh, it's not important. Going to church is more important than you drinking water. Ah, oh, that's a crack. I'm going to say that again. I say going to church is more important than you drinking water. That's how important it is because you're obeying God. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exalting one another and so much the more as he see the day approaching. You see what I just said? I said it's more important than you drinking water. It's about the coming of Christ. When Jesus comes, you begin to find out that this life here is totally meaningless. What have I been doing? Desire ye the sincere milk of the world. The world is milk. It's life. The church is a place you receive that. And that church, that place you worship, you, you have a pastor, is there where the blessing is commanded to flow. And it will flow in the name of Jesus. I want to read that again and then I close. Not forsaking the assembly in Hebrews chapter 10. I read from verse 24 to 25, but I want to just close with that 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exalting one another and so much the more as he see the day approaching. Praise the Lord. Oh, glory to God. I thank God for this privilege to bring Jesus into your home and to talk about him. And often when I come to teach, I teach difficult subjects and answer difficult questions. And if you have a question, you can write Pastor Joshua Bruno. We have our email there and you can write, uh, write us if, uh, if um, the media can respond to you. But I can also ask where when I get information. The Lord bless you. I want to pray for you. Please stretch your hands towards the camera. I pray today that the light of Jesus Christ will shine in your life. I pray that the light of the gospel will shine in your life. I pray that a new desire for the word of God and the church and the body of Christ will be rest upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that the spirit of grace that makes a man's face to shine, serving the Lord with joy and, 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 and happiness. May it rest upon you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that the spirit of grace that makes one serve God zealously, like his life depends upon it, will rest upon you in the name of Jesus. I pray today that God will bring a new mentor into your life, that God will establish the mentor you already have in your life, and that God will be a blessing to you through his prophets, his apostles, and his pastors and teachers and evangelists in the name of the living Jesus Christ. May the Lord bless you. Thank you for joining tonight. Please, you can give online to support this work. So many things that is going on for this ministry and uh, it takes money to do that. Even as I'm streaming, uh, it, 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 everything costs money. And I thank you for joining. Please, you can go to that button. You can click it. The website is down. So um, I don't know, you can check. Uh, maybe if you find it on Facebook there, but the, the website is down now, but you can actually give online when our website is back up. You can go back and check it when it's up. I'll be putting the information out. God bless you, Deacon and Shari. Thank you, Princess Shali. I saw you there and all of you that joined. There. Many other people around the world, I saw some names. The Lord bless you. Thank you all so much. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, members and partners of God Moment. May the Lord bless you. I love you with the precious love of Jesus Christ. I will see you on Sunday. Please tell someone, Pastor Joshua Bruno will be preaching on Sunday here in Germany, Gutas Lord Germany. Please join us. God bless you. I love you with the precious love of Jesus Christ. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. May the Lord be gracious unto you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I will see you again on Sunday live here on this platform. God bless you.